everybody, how's it going? It's Jessie from Jessie Marie Does Stuff here on FlossTube and I am here with a normal Wednesday update. Today is Wednesday, June the 14th of 2017. Uh, thank you for taking some time out of your day to chat with me about some stitching and some knitting. And uh, Normally there would be books, but I've got none of that going on, so we won't even... That's that. Um, I just want to take a second to thank you for watching my videos. Um, floss tube is humongous. There are so many floss tubers these days, and I just I'm, I'm just eternally grateful that you choose me to watch. Um, so thank you for that. Um, speaking of the word floss tuber, <laughs> I've been thinking about that word a lot lately. I don't know why, but it's just been like kind of on my mind. Floss tuber. We are floss potatoes. <laughs> At least I feel like a potato sometimes. Um, anyway, I hope that everybody is doing well. I hope that you are getting lots of stitching done. And uh, let's let's go ahead and get started. Um, to talk about the things that I have to talk about, um, I have a few questions and a topic for conversation, maybe an idea coming up. Um, I have some stitching that I've worked on and some plans upcoming, albeit not a lot, um, just because, like I talked to you guys a lot about ad nauseum last week, uh, things have toned down quite a bit. So um, I also have some retail therapy that I forgot to show you last week, so I will take care of that today, and then some knitting. And yeah, so then that's pretty much it. It's been pretty... Uh, pretty low-key around here as you can expect. There's a lot going on outside of my own stitching these days um, So yeah, so let's get it going um, and the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about some questions I'm gonna answer a few questions that I received on my last two update videos So the stitching one that was over an hour long and the knitting one that was almost an hour I think anyway Okay, so uh, first question comes from Lisa's Stitching and Such. Hey, Lisa. Um, and she asks, uh, I would love to see a whip parade of your haids um, and your mirrors, too, to be honest. Um, do you have, and then um, she asks, do you have any haid charts or um, whips of Amy Stewart's art? So, whip parade for the haids and the mirrors. I would love to do that, and I am definitely going to but not today, and here's why. Uh, last week I talked to you guys that I was toning down my whip pile, and in doing so, I took all of my other whips, all other 60 some out of them, put them in my pretty little black and white boxes, and put them away so that I can't look at them and so that they are not tempting me. And um, they are like tucked back in that closet that like nobody ever goes into, and they are hidden away. <laughs> so um, I will definitely do a whip parade of my haids, but I need some time to get in there and um, pull all that out and get it organized and such. Um, so I'll do that here. I'll do it at some point this year, um, but no promises when. Um, okay, and then the with regards to Amy Stewart's art, I don't have any of her whips, um, but I do have several of her charts. Um, a few of them from the uh, reward charts from the Hey Challenges. And then I also have her wine shelf and the, um, there's another one that's not a recognizable Amy Stewart. Like it's, I mean, it's recognizable as Amy Stewart, but it's not the shelves. Oh, if I think of it or if I, look into my files, I'll, I'll put the information about it here, and then... And then, like, near the top of my um, wish list is that new one that she just released, the um, Life is an Open Book New York. Yeah, need that in my life. 
There's even a little flat iron building in it. It's got my name all over it. So um, no whips though, just, just charts. Okay, uh, next question from Andrea at I Heart Cross Stitch, or is it Andrea? I think it's Andrea. Your last video, you said it was Andrea. Um, okay, so she asks, I want to start Lady of the Mist by Mirabilia, and I'm curious if you think it would look good on Keone. Um, and I looked that up on the fabric viewer. Based on what I could see, Lady of the Mist would look beautiful on that fabric. I think it, I think it looks awesome, and I'll insert the, um, a screenshot of that scan here because it's gorgeous. Um, very soft, dusty purple color. She also asks, um, at some point, could you please explain the different weights of Nymo beading thread? And I will be happy to do so. Um, so I get my information from Fire Mountain Gems. Um, Fire Mountain Gems sells pretty much any color of Nymo you can think of at any weight of any amount. Um, and so that's where this information is coming from. I'll insert the table that's from there here. The only reason that I consider O weight to be my favorite is that that's what comes with your Chatelaine bead kits. Um, you get the, the spool that has the O weight. So that's why the O weight is most comfortable for me, just because it came with my Chatelaine kit. It looks really great with all size beads and all color of beads, which is really the most important for me. Um, just because so many designs use those clear or crystal col colored beads. Um, so if you want an invisible thread, it needs to look invisible even in the clear or crystal stuff. So that's, uh, that's that. Um, okay, next question comes from Jill. Hello, Jill. Um, and she said, um, I do have a question regarding your heaven and earth design stitching. When you're stitching in 10 by 10 blocks, do you still find it necessary to grid? Yes, the long and short of that is yes. Um, and the reason for that, there's there's a couple of reasons. The biggest one is that I park. And if I am parking in the top of this block here, or excuse me, if I'm stitching in this block here and I need to park down here, finding the eighth stitch from the left and the seventh stitch from the top, it's so much easier having that gridded out. Um, because I stitch in 10 by 10 blocks on the diagonal, that does help quite a bit. That's why I never had to necessarily grid um, personal sunshine. But it's not perfect because I do carry the stitches a little bit beyond the borders of a column to avoid any column lines or anything. And so that can fuzz up the blocks. And so the blocks aren't always... Um, it's they're not dependable shall we say for for parking sake um, and I'll show you that here because I'm about to show you my heaven and earth design and um, yeah so you'll be able to to see that there okay next question comes from Teresa hello Teresa um, and this is a knitting question and it's based on my Ashburn shawl um, and she said how did you how did you come up with the yellow green and purple um so <laughs> Here's what it is. Um, it was in my stash. Um, I love the ochre colorway from Malabrigo. That is like one of my favorite deep golden yellow colors. So I had a couple of skeins and I was planning on using it for a different Hohi Locatelli shawl design uh, that she had designed in ochre. Um, so I had that in my stash. The lettuce I purchased uh, the green color I purchased to work with a pink that I have in my stash. Um, and so I thought that I would knit something two color out of those two. Um, it's a bright pink Malabrigo, um, because of course Malabrigo. And um, I like the color combination, but pink and green, I can see myself choosing pink and green for just about everything. My outfit although this is turquoise, but anyway. Um, <laughs> so I decided to pull that green for this shawl. So I've got yellow and green, and I needed a third color. So I'm looking in my stash, and I'm like, you know, eggplant. I have the eggplant in the same base, and in real life, it looks very dark gray, almost black. And in good lighting, or uh, the 
uh, product shots that the various yarn sellers use, it's dark purple. Well, those are really great fall colors. So that's just kind of how it all came together. I knew that I wanted to use ochre. The lettuce works well with the ochre, and I needed a third. So that's that. Um, picking colors for three color or more is so hard because you have to find a way to make all three of those colors be able to play well together, or five, like in the instance of my um, Hohi Locatelli mystery. It's, it's not easy to come up with those colors because they just you just never know how they're all going to sit together. Um, it's almost a crapshoot, if I'm honest. <laughs> Okay, um, and then she also asks, do you knit continental or the traditional way? And I knit the traditional way. Um, in other words, I hold the yarn in my right hand and I wrap it. Um, I have tried flicking. In other words, still holding the yarn in my right hand um, and um, tensioning the yarn around my index finger and then just like flicking it around the needle. Um, and it messes up my gauge. So I need to start a project solely in either flicking or continental to teach my hands how to do that, number one, and to figure out my gauge because I can't switch mid-project. Um, it really does. It, it, it's tighter when I flick. Um, I'm like imagining my hands actually doing it there. It's, it's tighter knitting for me. And I'm not entirely sure that might have something to do with too much tension. Um, my tensioning while I'm knitting is, I don't tension a lot. Um, it's really, really, it's kind of loose almost. So there's that. Um, I tried to learn Continental, but Continental and I do not get along very well. Um, it's another one of those things that I really just need to spend some time and try to figure it out. And maybe I need to invest in some more bamboo needles. Uh, and that way I'm not so worried about yarn slipping. And I can teach my hands how to do this. It's so silly. I'm left-handed. Surely I should be able to knit Continental. Can't figure it out. Um, and I know that Continental means that you can purl so much faster and you can knit so much faster because it's just all so centrally located and it doesn't need near as much body movement to make happen. I mean, I talked about this before, but when you knit um, traditional or English style and you wrap like I do, then you're knitting, wrap, takes like your whole body. And I mean, like that's a more dramatic version of it. But continental, it's just all right here. You just use your hands to make the needles do what they need to do. So anyway, so there's that. Um, and then the last thing that I have to talk about is stitchathon. So I have been, I've received a lot of really great love over the stitchathon. Sorry, my phone. Um, a lot of people who responded very positively towards my 12-hour stitchathon, and I thought a lot of you were going to look at me like I was a crazy person, um, and who can, who can shirk their responsibilities for that long, and, you know, that sort of thing. But a lot of people are like, that's really cool, and I love seeing the progression of things. So, um, there's also a stitcher on Instagram who announced that she's going to do a 24-hour in 48 this coming weekend, and I'm so stoked about that. That's so cool. Um, so, oh, I'll come back to that in just a second. Stitch Mania has recently released all of their sales for 2018. And huh, there's a lot. <laughs> like, if you can't find a sow for every one of your projects, then let me know and I'll figure it out for you because like, <laughs> it's crazy. It's crazy. So many cells. I love it. Um, but one of the cells that was announced, um, and Katie warned me of this, um, that Katie and Garrett's birthdays next year are going to be very much in the same vein as my birthday cell. Um, and so it's a, an almost, if not exactly two week, long daily rotation with different tasks associated. I'm like, that's so awesome. I'm so glad I'm not the only one who loves this. Well, 
Garrett's birthday is just a few days after mine. And so his birthday sal steamrolls right over my birthday. And that kind of that kind of changes things for me. Okay. There's overlapping days, and so like I don't want my tasks to interfere with his, and I don't want his tasks to interfere with mine. I don't want people to feel like they have to choose sides, like whatever. So I've been trying to think of something different. Next year for me is a big one. It's 30. I'm going to be 30 next year. Not only that, but my mom, sorry mom, I'm calling you out here, is going to be 50 next year. So, like, this is a big birthday for my family. And I want to be able to celebrate it like I did this year because this year was so much fun. It was so cool. I'm still, <laughs> admittedly, I'm still trying to catch up on some of the videos from my birthday cell. Just so much fun. And... So I've been trying to think of a way to, to still be able to celebrate my birthday in a totally me kind of way, but to not interfere with Garrett's birthday style because I don't want to do that. So I am contemplating holding a 30 in 72 stitch-a-thon. And so basically what this means is that for a combined total of 30 hours in the span of three days, um, to stitch, to put in 30 hours on a project and see how it goes. Um, and this is gonna take some planning and I kind of am just putting it out there to see what you guys' feedback is. I might run a mini one here um, within the next six months or so to give it a trial run, maybe, if you're interested. Um, just trying to come up with a way to still be able to celebrate my birthday and Garrett's all at the same time. Last topic for discussion, before I start showing whips, um, and this is going to apply to one of the whips. Um, I received a message from uh, Nancy, and she wants some clarification on my um, Paco thread organizers that I use for several of my hades. Um, and so I'm gonna show you those here in a second and sort of how they work for me. Um, if by any chance, by some miracle, somebody out there knows which video I've talked about them in the past, let me know, um, because um, she asked which video it was, and I, I can't remember. I don't remember. Uh, so if you guys know, let me know, and um, we will we'll get that information passed on. So let's get going with the whip review. Since we last spoke last Thursday, I have worked on two whips, and... Um, this is going to transition very nicely. So, um, the first thing that I worked on, I worked on my fantasy sal on Thursday, and I'll show you that here in a second. So, on Friday, I pulled out my Heaven and Earth Design Faces of Fairy 201 for Heaven and Earth Design Weekend, and I am in love with this, with this change up in my rotation, at least today. We'll talk if anything changes, but anyway. Um, so here is what the full design will look like finished. Artwork by Jasmine Beckett Griffith, Faces of Fairy 201, of course. You'll be seeing a preview here of what this looked like when I showed it to you last week. And here is where I got to. So I was at just under half a page before. And here's where I am currently. <laughs> Almost done. Getting really close, guys. So I have like 1,200 stitches left of the, of the page. So yeah, really, really stoked about that. What makes me even more excited is that this page, when I worked on it this time, um, I got down to her eyeball. So I got to bring in some of those evil reds at the, at the top of her eyeball in her, um, what is it, the iris? Yes, the iris. And you can even see some of the sclera there, the white of your eye. And yeah, so love, love, love. That eyeball, confetti crazy. Um, because I am parking in the page below, um, I can see already the confetti that's coming. And I know that Davina of uh, Mamula has already talked about this, uh, but that eyeball, yeah, 
that's some confetti. So there we have it. Um, and here's where you can see that I need the, uh, the grid lines. So it's much easier, first of all, it's much easier if I'm stitching this bottom row right here to see that I need to go three stitches past that grid line rather than having to count to 13 or maybe 13. Maybe I had some stitches there to begin with. It's just so much easier to see where I need to stop. And then to park the threads, especially when we get into these sections where there's lots. So like this block here has got uh, eight threads parked in it. So um, that's why I still grid even though I use the 10 by 10 blocks and even though I use the diagonals. I just like to be able to see that. So there's that. And my, um, my gridding when uh, I'm not using easy count is as basic and as quick as it can be. I don't do the horizontals, I just do the verticals and I go up, come down at 10 stitches, come back up at 10 stitches and that's all I do. So, real basic. Anyway, so there's that. So I get back to this um, on Friday and I'll finish that page and then depending on how quickly I finish that page, I'm going to come down here and start working on page four. <laughs> so exciting. I had debated on finishing the page and then putting it away for the rest of the month, um, but I'm not going to do that because I would like to get, um, get this project finished this year, so I'm just going to keep going. Okay, so now let's talk about um, Paco thread, or thread organizers. So this is one of mine for faces. And a couple of things that you should know. Some people use these thread organizers and they put an entire skein on each of these and this can handle an entire skein, no sweat, no problem at all. I don't like that. I work in lengths and so I will cut a length and my lengths for uh, stitching one strand over one is, um, it's 24 inches, so it's two foot. And although I probably could go up a little bit because sometimes I think they're too small. Anyway, um, and so I hastily and sometimes ineffectually drew the symbols on here. And then for my own reference, I have the numbers along the top. Okay. So, um, let's say I need this purple color here. So I'll reach in with my needle, pick up one loop and pull it out. This, um, rubber, I don't even know what to call that, guard, holder thing, <laughs> we'll say, keeps the other five strands stuck there while I pull this, this one out. Actually, I have a needle right here. I'm gonna demo. Okay, so reach in here, grab one thread, pull, check, done. Okay, so there's that. So I have my one strand here and those are still there. Next, Let's say I finished this thread. So I just lay it over top of that, lay it over top of the hook. Done. Sorry, I know I just committed like stitchers and I put the needle in my mouth, but we'll do it. Don't lie. Anyway, so there's that. Um, so that's, that's how I use Apacos. And you can see things get tangled, but they come untangled real easy progressively and while I'm stitching. If things get a little too crazy, then I run my fingers through and it combs it right on out. So there's that. That's how I use them. Um, and Nancy, if you have any more questions about it, um, just let me know and I'll be happy to answer them. Okay. So. That was that. On Monday, let me tell you how hard it was for me to put that away 
and pull out another project because I wanted to just stick with it and just finish the page. It would have taken me two or three days. Let's be honest, it probably would have taken me four days nowadays, but anyway. Um, but I did. I stuck with my rotation. I said, you know what? If I'm going to do this, I better be consistent and I better really give it the old college try. I switched to my fantasy cell and you'll be seeing a preview here of what this looked like the last time you saw it. Um, I was part of the way through the June block, which was the elf. And upside down, this morning I finished the June block. So cute. I stitched his skin, or hers actually, I think, I think it's a she. Because it kind of looks like she's wearing a dress. I guess it could be a he. Okay, I'm going to go with a he because he's been a he forever. And he's totally wearing a dress. That's fine. Okay, anyway, so my elf and the little snail. Oh my gosh, the little snail. I love the snail. So cute. Right there. Um, it was charted, I think, I think, to backstitch the little antennae, but I did French knots. Yeah, I chose French knots. <laughs> Who does that? But I did. Because I just thought they looked a little bit cuter, just a little, little round. And then I also finished up the snowflake this morning. Um, because as you might have seen in that preview, I only had just a little bit of the snowflake done. So there's that. So all told from beginning of June to now, eight days total stitching put into this so far. I'm getting burnt out. I am, I'm ready for something else. Um, fortunately my hate is coming up on Friday, so I'll be able to switch to that then. I'm ready, I'm ready to be done with this one for this month. Um, as I told you guys, my goal was to finish page two of the border as well as those two blocks. Um, basically my plan is that I've got it for today and tomorrow. Whatever I do between today and tomorrow, that's it. I'm calling it because this is really, it's just dense stitching and um, so I'm just, I'm just ready to move on to something else. So I'm cool. I've got two of my three goals done. I'm caught up on the blocks. The border can wait. It can wait another month. So there's that. And um, yeah, I do love the way that the elf turned out. I admit myself a little bored of the um, small human humanoid-like characters. So we have a witch and a wizard, a goblin, a fairy, a gnome, and an elf. So that's six of 12 human-like characters. It's fine, and it's fantasy, and it's adorable, and I mean, there is no questioning how cute they are, but I don't know, I was just, I was expecting like fantastical creatures, um, like a selkie, or uh, a griffin, or um, I don't know, I was expecting something else, and I shouldn't have. I've had this thought. I shouldn't have, because I know Doreen Jones's body of work. That's not her style. <laughs> she doesn't do the dark and twisty fantasy style. She does the cute and adorable and like safe for children's bedrooms kind of fantasy. So there's that. Okay. So that's it for whips. Um, as I said, my heaven and earth design is coming out on Friday. As of Monday, I'm not sure what I'm going to work on because like I said, I'm done with that as of, as of tomorrow. Um, so it could be my heron for the week. It could be the birthstone dragon's owl because I do still have to catch up on that. It could be flowering flourish by Connie G. We'll see. I'm going where my mood takes me. Okay, so that's it for whips and plans. Next, let's talk about the retail therapy that I forgot to show you last week. Um, and that is just a few needle minders from Juliet Nifty Needle Nannies. So I had resolved myself that I was not going to buy any needle minders this month because my stitch from stash has gone basically entirely to needle minders. 
Um, that's where I have spent most of my budget this year. So I was like, I don't need any more right now. I'm good with what I've got. It's okay. I had this thought. And then Brittany from Blimey Cat Stitches and Ingleside Imaginarium tagged me on Facebook for a new offering from Julie. And I looked at it and I went, Ugh. <laughs> there goes that. So she tagged me with this little guy, a bulldog head laser cut with this look of like bulldog, like it wasn't me. I didn't do it. My dog has that look all the time. I swear to goodness, Thor is like always like, I'm innocent. I didn't do it. Whatever you think I did. <laughs> That's so him. Not only that, but this one has the little brown spot on the top of his head. His coloring is obviously a little bit different than Thor's. Um, it's pretty close. So there's that. So I was like, well, I'm not going to buy just one needle minder. So I got a couple of agate slices. This is a beautiful purple one. And I kind of like the, um, the center of it's got like a crystally effect. Like you can see some of the crystal. Yeah, that's cool. And then I got another small agate in this turquoise tealy blue green color. Oh, that's what I really, really liked about this one. Um, it is kind of clear on the bottom. Like it's see-through. See that? I like that. And they've got the bubble, bubble backs. And then I couldn't resist this gorgeous peacock because this gorgeous peacock had to come home with me. Absolutely gorgeous. So there's that. Those are my new needle minder additions. Um, I also have hand dyed fabrics by Stephanie's uh, May fabric of the month, but that's sitting in my mailbox and I didn't go get it. So next time, I'll show it to you next time. Um, so that is it for retail therapy. Next, we're gonna move on to knitting. Okay, now, what have I been knitting? One thing, just one. Uh, I haven't been doing a ton of knitting, but um, I have been doing a little bit, and that is my Sprites Fen shawl. And so this is what I'm talking about with a cake that's kind of starting to disintegrate. So you can see that the top is starting to come a little bit loose, and there's definitely some emptiness on the inside of it. I did weigh this recently, and I've used about 30 grams so far of just over 100. So we're moving along. And I, let's see, right side, there we go. So when I showed this to you last Friday, yeah, it must have been Friday. I was in the garter section here, and I have since moved into the garter eyelet section. So you can kind of see those, those eyelets there. I am on row like 140 something of 200, still at 260 stitches, but I have some bigger needles coming, or some longer needles I should say. Um, and they should be here today actually because I need them to be able to finish this thing. I have days where I knit two rows, three rows, maybe four, and then a couple of days ago I knit 15. <laughs> Just out of the blue, I knit 15 rows. I don't even know what I was doing. Oh, that was on Monday, and I was all kinds of stressed out. Um, so I was knitting to, to try to handle that stress. Anyway, um, so that's where I'm at with my Sprites Fen. The yarn, as I mentioned last time, it is Shalimar Yarns Breathless Lace in a merino silk cashmere blend lace weight. The color is thistle. Absolutely gorgeous. Um, so there is that. And I will, uh, I'll keep working on this. I really want to have this finished quickly here, um, but I have to... Um, I have to account for time and I don't have a ton of that. So there is that. Let's not let the needles clank. 
And then uh, tomorrow, <laughs> tomorrow is a new cast on day. Um, because tomorrow starts the Through the Loops Mystery 2017, Summer Knit Along. Um, my other yarn is in the mailbox right now. I forgot to go get it. Um, but I will show you that next week. And hopefully I have a cable to be able to cast that on tomorrow, but we'll see. We shall see. Um, I can already say that I'm probably going to fall behind on the Through the Loops Mystery uh, because limited time. And Sprite Spen is my priority. So that is it for the knitting and for all of the things that I needed to talk about crafting wise. So I think that I'm going to end it off here. We're at like somewhere around 40 minutes, which is pretty great. Um, and I will bid you adieu and I will see you guys next time. Thank you so much for watching. Um, yeah, you guys are just the greatest. Thank you for your comments and your likes and everything. I really love, love floss tubes. So good. Um, and in that vein, I'm going to end with please be nice to each other. It's a world these days where we just need to be nice. All right, take care. Happy stitching. And then there's like interlapping, interlapping. I don't even know if that's a word. I might have just made that up. That if I was doing episode titles, this would be called interlapping. Anyway, um, <laughs> like there's overlap. That's the word. <laughs>